Hello and welcome back to the Puncher's Chance podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be having a look forward at the big fights next weekend. Artur Betabiev versus Dmitry Bivol. Five world light heavyweight belts on the line. Bivol's IBF and WBA, or IBO and WBA versus Betabiev's IBF, WBC and WBO world titles. Straight into it, Ben. What's your prediction? I'm joking. You gotta wait to the end for <laughs> that one. Wait till the Just end. Just shows for that. how big this fight is because we're all excited. We're so excited. The for this best one. fight in boxing is happening. We are what days away from it happening now. Hours. Ah, oh, it's such a good fight. So so good. These two, they're both Russians. They've both fought each other before in sparring. But like they said in the build-up, sparring, sparring. You sometimes go in the sparring to fight, and you also go in there to win. And this fight on Saturday night is huge. And you got to put it down to Saudi Arabia for making it happen. It nearly didn't happen, obviously, earlier on in the year. It was meant to happen on June 1st, where, for me, I wasn't too happy that it was happening on that card because I thought it was getting pushed to one side with it, all the big thing of the 5v5 and then them being the main event. But now they've got an entire card that's basically aimed at just that fight. It's the best fight in boxing. It's a pure 50-50. Somebody's always got to go. It's a boxer against a puncher. Anything can happen. Predictions for me, I like if you're coming here for predictions, don't because I don't think uh, I can make one because it's so, so, so close. And then you look at the undercard. You talk about the main event being a 50 50. Fabio Baldi, Fraser Clark, round number 13, as you were, you know, Sky Nicholson, Raven Chapman, the first female fight in Riyadh season. And that's another 50 50. Chris Eubank Jr. is on the card. You know, Ben Whitaker, the showman that he is. What was he going to do this fight week? What's he going to do on fight night? You don't know. And then, yeah, it's just a brilliant, brilliant night of boxing. And for 1999, yeah, happy days. I think we can stop the podcast, but I think he's covered yeah, it all. There we go. So I'm just excited. I'm pure. It's just excitement because it's the best fight in boxing. He's, happening. he's just covered everything. He hasn't given us a chance, to be fair. <laughs> is the main event the. the Tough. I know we say a lot. Is it the toughest fight to call? Yeah. In world boxing, do you think? Yes. Yes, I think it is, and I, I think the reason it is is because they are both the best in the world, or certainly the best in their division, but arguably the best in boxing at one thing. Better be of as that pressure, that power, brute, just smash it through. Bivol technician skill ability, but that almost sells them both short because that's suggesting that Betabiev has very little skill, very little ring IQ, which is just not true. You know, he's probably second or third best in the division at those things. And Bivol does hold some power. He has had finishes in his career. He doesn't always necessarily go for the finish. He's he's more um, conservative. And you look at it, if anyone can can beat up Bivol and stop him outboxing you, it's probably Arta Betabiev. And if anyone can stop Arta Betabiev beating them up and just outskill them, it's Dimitri Bivol. <laughs> so, you know, it really comes down to, I think, how you feel about the fighters. One particular thing mm. that maybe people add weight on is how you predict this fight, rather than being able to say with any great confidence, any real knowing who's going to win. Do you think there's any risk there of, like... We've seen it before, where, like you look at a fight and think, oh, that's a 50-50, like Crawford and Errol Spence, and then just one fighter just runs away with it. Or, like, imagine this weekend, one of them just, like, batters them within a couple of rounds, and you're like, oh, my God. It is going to be funny when we're sat at, like, 10pm on, on Saturday, <laughs> and it's first gonna be round, a round one someone weekend. finishes them off, and we're like, oh, <laughs> okay. We built it all up. The Never best mind. fight in boxing, and it ends in two minutes. No, I, I, it doesn't, surely. I don't think God, it does. doesn't. It got, it's got a lot of rounds in it, surely. I'm really looking. I haven't looked forward to a fight as much as this one in a while. I don't think. Like in terms, of, we've had a lot of good fights this year, but these two going up against each other is going to be something special, not something you will ever often get to see. And not just that that main event. Like I said, the whole card is so good. It's one of the best cards of the year again from Saudi. And uh, we yeah, should have had a really Cordina Shakur Stevenson on this as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, this should have been yes, even yeah. better a card. Which is... got everything that was meant to be on it. Like, yeah, you've got history making stuff, British title fight, which is like always gives you a good mm. a good fight. You got Chris Hugh Bank back in action. It's just yeah, it's a night not to be missed. I don't think. Well, yeah. the main event as well. The winner. I've just got by you. Will be the first undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world since Roy Jones Jr. 
Wow. So it's a lot. 1999 that was. What's that? 25 years ago. It's a bit like that in the disputed fight we had with Usyk and Fury. There's a lot on the line. The fight has no rematch clause as well. Both fighters are guaranteed a purse of $10 million. And as we said, Better Biev has got a 100% KO rate. He's knocked out everybody that he's faced. And that's the concern coming into this fight for Bivol is has he got the chin to you know, get away from the power. We saw Bivol against Canelo Alvarez. Everyone was saying Canelo is going to simply outbox him. The power's too much. Obviously, that night was all very much one-sided. And everyone's talking about this fight. It's been, I think, on our minds since, when was it, May, that we knew that it was going to be happening, even earlier than that, April probably. I think we've been talking about it literally since Better BF beat Callum Smith. Yeah, so From January. that moment onwards, we've gone, this fight needs to happen mm-hmm. now. And then, yeah, like you say, with the delays and whatnot. But I think for us now as fans, we're all sitting here excited, but we just want to, we just, I just want to hear that first bell. And then I know it's happening. It was a bit like that Fury Usyk fight where they were doing all the build up. They had the grand arrivals. You're like, oh, we're a step closer. Then we had the open workouts. We're like, oh, come on now. We really want this fight. <laughs> and then we had the press conference. Like, oh, come on, like, let's get to fight night. Then the weigh ins the attitude I think these two aren't going to be like that I think they're going to be very respectful no pushing and shoving they know what they both carry better be have been the more powerful puncher in my opinion Bivol the more boxing IQ but yeah when that first bell goes I think it's going to be you're not going to be sat back on your settee watching it you're going to be upright on the edge of your seat because if you blink you could miss something and yeah I oh, it's so good it's such a great fight and if Saudi Arabia, like we said at the start, if Saudi Arabia weren't involved in boxing, I d- this fight would never have happened. I think better be a, with that injury that he sustained in June or May. I don't think we would have seen him again. And look at him now, undisputed fight, Dimitri Bivol, and yeah, I think this is a much tougher call than Fury Usyk for a lot of people. And you can we can sit here now and make our predictions. We're not going to be like, yeah, he's definitely <laughs> going to do it because there's another thing going on in your mind where. Actually, hang on. He could knock. It's just such a good fight. Yeah, I, 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 I was pretty confident. Like I said before, mm. in between the the last episode and this one, um, I said, and I was pretty confident that F- uh, Music was going to beat Fury. This one, I'm not that confident. Do you know what I might actually do? Not that I condone betting. I might put a <laughs> fiver on what I didn't go against the prediction. Yeah. So at least then, if I'm lost, if I'm disappointed, then I. I've uh, but don't 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 do that. Don't bet your money away. Um, yeah, you can if you want, but um. I think it, what they've done, what's really smart with this card is you've got Ben Whitaker on the card and you've obviously got Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark. Um, and those two will probably carry the fight week a little bit. The bite between Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley, we've seen it. They're kind of respectful. At they the both, moment. And they both yeah. say they're respectful, but then actually they're all just <laughs> constantly trying to get in like petty little digs wherever they can. Um, and, and then Ben Whitaker, you know, he's going to have something up his sleeve. God knows what, but he will have something up his sleeve for fight week, no doubt. I think with Ben Whitaker, you, I don't think Liam Cameron's going to take it. You know, Liam Cameron returned to the ring, what was it, a couple of months ago now against Lyndon Arthur. And for me, he actually put a good showing in that night up in Bolton and rightly deserves this opportunity now over in Saudi, but he's up against probably the most talked about boxer or British boxer at the moment, Ben Whitaker. And yeah, that's a great, great fight for me. And that heavyweight clash, Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark, round 13. It's a tough fight to call. They both know a lot about each other now. They've shared 12 grueling rounds of boxing where, you know, at one point we thought Fraser Clark was out, completely gone, and then he comes back. He finishes the fight strongly. And, yeah, Fabio Wardley, I think the thing that's going to be a massive factor in this fight is Fabio Wardley's nose. We've seen it at the press conference, what was it, a week ago or something now. That nose still doesn't look... It doesn't look great it looks like there's still the scar tissues there is that a factor in this fight does Fraser Clark target that but I was watching something that um, they did with TNT Sports before we filmed this and Fabio Wardley said it's probably a decent place to have a cut because it's not anywhere to do with your eyes it's not going to affect your vision it's just going to flow straight down your face for me it's another tough fight to call and a lot of people have criticized this fight for not happening in the UK you know, but at the end of the day, that fight that they had, what was it? What was it on the Sunday night back in Easter? When it Easter Sunday, I think it was Easter Sunday they did this fight, yeah, and it does. they both went at it, and they've put a lot of mileage on the clock now for both men. Fraser Clark in his what was it? His ninth fight, 
has got a lot of mileage now on his clock and for me I think it's great this in Saudi Arabia because they get a big big payday and they rightly deserve it and oh, it's another tough one to call have you seen this this actually isn't um, Fabio Wardley's um, first British title fight no. he obviously fought David, David Adelaide yeah. which was the first time it, the British title was fought for outside of the UK since I think 2005 when it was fought in Dublin and then since before then it was 1914 1914 um, and it was about five or six fights in in Australia during ben, that year we'll ask Ben about that day 1914 do you remember that day do you remember that the, yeah. the first um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah so it it it's disappointing but it's not the first time it's happened it's gonna happen a lot more it, is it really it? though because they're getting paid and they're gonna put yeah, on it's a good, great it's good show. for the fight does but like because boxing's a career where you're not gonna you don't want to be doing it for 15 years 20 years you want to get in and get out and get as much money as possible and that's what they're doing yeah but from a fan's point of view yeah this would have been a dead set perfect main event mm-hmm. big show o2 something along those lines we're not getting it hopefully we get another fight in its place um in terms of a, a British main event fight, a, a big event in well, the UK. Well, we've got we've got loads, haven't we? Um, Adam Azim, O'Hara yeah. Davis. We've got uh, Sonny Edwards, Galal yeah, Yafai. You're not talking superstars. You're not talking British heavyweight title fight. Yeah, like it, yeah. there like is mean, heavyweight. Is heavyweight the action for most people in there. Like a British heavyweight, t- like the like you said, them two headlining anywhere across the country sells out. Sells out and. You gotta think of the British fighters that would have been on an undercard like that, yeah. or missing out on that opportunity now because everything's going to Saudi. Like we've spoke to countless British fighters, especially Welsh fighters, over the last sort of few weeks and months of like the opportunities to try it as good as it, it Saudi has been in terms of back here in the UK. It has sort of dried up for some people, and they're missing out on opportunities then and like the money isn't there for everyone as good as it is for the people who are taking part in these there's also you got to think of the other fighters that are not getting any opportunities at all and yeah i think it's easier for us to say because you know we don't tend to go to big stadium fights yeah um so i suppose we're not necessarily missing out on as much but like like i think harry generally says my over my general feeling on it is there are so many fights that we wouldn't be getting if it wasn't for saudi arabia so I'm just going to enjoy it while I can, take it as it is, and, you know, be happy that we're getting them rather than it's, being disappointed. It's not going to last forever, is it? No. Like this year, we saw a, I saw a tweet earlier today about what's happened in boxing over the last year. We had the Battle of the Kings, I believe it was called, but, or the Battle of the Giants, I think it was called, Tyson Fury, Francis and Garni, then the Day of Reckoning, then we had Knockout Chaos, then we had the Undisputed Fight, then we had the 5v5, and now we're having better BF Bivol. And then we're having Fury Usyk. But then in between that, we've had great fight nights across Britain as well, haven't we? Birmingham has been, you know, the capital, I think, of great fights. We've had Nathan Heaney, Brad Pauls. We've had, well, we had Tasha Jonas against Mikhail Meyer. That's a fight of the year right by there. Uh, Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark was an incredible night of boxing, I thought. They stacked that really, really good. And, yeah, I think at the end of the day, there's a lot of fights that deserve to happen in the UK but when they're going to get paid well, you can't just say, oh, come on, guys, let's, let's take a cut of 50%. They're probably getting paid double for going over to Saudi Arabia. So you've got to give it to them. But, yeah, I think this fight easily sells out the O2, potentially even bigger than that. But, yeah, I, oh, it's so good to call. It's such a good fight again. And another fighter on the Jayopataya, Jack Massey. Fair play to Jack Massey, a Yorkshire boy. He's getting a big, big opportunity. We all thought that potentially we could be seeing Jai Opataya, Chris Billum Smith in a massive, massive fight. Obviously, he's now fighting on Latino night. What was it? November 16th in Riyadh. But yeah, Jack Massey's got a massive, massive opportunity here. He's gone the distance with Joseph Parker, a heavyweight that has reignited his career. He's up there now with some of the big names in boxing. And yeah, Jai Opataya for me is pound for pound number one in the cruiserweight division, no questions asked. And he could, for me, does he walk through Jack Massey? Yes. But I think Massey asks a lot of questions. I think he's going to be very durable. And if he's like what he was like against Parker, he's going to cause some issues. But I do expect Jai Opataya to get the win. But Jai Opataya for me now... How, how many more fights is he going to have at Cruiserweight before he makes that next step up and following the footsteps I don't, I don't of Usyk? Goes up. You don't think? But th- 
the question is though, everyone was saying Usyk's going to be too small when he goes up to heavyweight. It's the land of the giants. I'm not being funny. Usyk's gone through what? Dubois, Anthony Joshua, Derek Chisora, Tyson Fury. Yeah. They're not small, are they? They're very, very big heavyweights. And he'd made it look easy. Yeah, but Usyk's a one of a kind. kind yeah. Of like he's like... I, think, I think the thing that concerns yeah. me with Jaya Pattaya is it was a very impressive... <laughs> two knockouts against uh, Thompson and Zorro he didn't look great against Bradis for the second time he obviously struggled saying. against Bradis for the first time and I think Jack Massey is going to be really really confident off the back of making Isaac Chamberlain look pretty rubbish um, in their fight and I think do I think Opatai will win it? yeah probably but um, I bigged up Jai Opatai when I watched uh, whatever card the Raiders fight was on um, to my girlfriend's dad uh, who was watching it with me and then he was pretty crap and it was kind of like well I feel like I've sold him short here so I don't know I don't I think you're being harsh on Massey no no let's be honest though Massey is coming off I'm not being harsh I'm just saying that Apatai is one of the greats in the cruiserweight division Massey's coming off a massive massive win against Isaac Chamberlain where did any of us give Massey a chance not particularly not did me I can't remember if we predicted didn't you predict Massey to win or was I think it you oh, might have done I think I, think, I can't I think, remember I think it was Vidal Riley ranked his best cruiserweights in this country and he went Billum Smith Massey Massey and then I can't remember the and order probably him there. Was it, and probably him um, yeah. no I think I think he was lower I think he put I think he even put Chev Clark above himself okay. humble, I was going to um, say like I think as you'd have a fair argument uh, Massey to put himself a number two and that's only because Billum Smith holds a world title I still think Opatai, that Opatai and Billum Smith is the move to make it's if he great, does pass. That's a great fight to start 2025. If Billum Smith, Billum Smith obviously has to win his, his fight that's coming up. Is it, is it the end of this year? Or? November 16th. Yeah, November. Yeah. Latino obviously, night. He needs to get through that fight, which is by no means an easy test in itself. But I think that's the fight that will be made in 2025. But I wouldn't exactly ca- count Jack Marcy out as he's going to be going into the weekend a big underdog as most people probably will against Jai Opataya but as you said it's like you're only as good as your last fight sometimes and he didn't look as impressive against no. Marius Bredis and like towards the end of that fight as far as I can remember he was under a lot of pressure from Bredis and like had to sort of get over the line a bit and Massey's just got to take the opportunity it's given to him now like it's a win-win situation in many ways for him it's like a, a cracker a world title uh, probably 18 months ago he probably didn't think he was gonna have and now if he wins that then him and CBS are the ones that are going for an all British unification unification yeah. fight it's great it's, it's great it's a big opportunity I feel like this preview is, is felt messy because every time we finish <laughs> one we're like, oh, but what about this brilliant yeah. fight as well? We haven't mentioned the fact that Chris Eubank Jr. is going to get another shot at a, a world title, the IBO world middleweight title. Sky Nicholson and Raven Chapman, not only the first female fight on Riyadh season, it's the first female world title sh- sh- fight in Saudi Arabia. Um, I think if anybody at the featherweight division, bar obviously Elizabeth Ashoba, we've spoken about a lot, if anyone can give Sky Nicholson a tough time, it's Raven Chapman. I think Sky is the obvious favourite to make that matchroom final first victory against Queensbury in God knows how long. But let's be real, Raven's not just going to roll over and let her have it, is she? She's gonna, she's gonna go and turn up for it. She's gonna push her for it. And yeah, I think she's, uh, she's as close as it comes to a real test for Sky Nicholson at the moment. She comes in on the front foot. She doesn't take a back, backward step, Raven Chapman, and. I think this is a massive, massive test for Sky Nicholson. I believe in her last two fights, she hasn't lost a round or maybe just one round on a judge's scorecard. And Raven Chapman's looked really, really good this year. And it, like you said, this card, you're like, this fight's another good fight. It, it's all great. And it's great to see that now they're looking into women's boxing and getting the big, big fights. And it's matchroom against Queensbury. Does it follow the same theme of what's happened this year with a Queensbury fighter beating a matchroom fighter? I'm not too sure, but yeah, Sky Nicholson, this is a big, big test. The last two fights have been staying active, and now this is the fight now where you 
start putting your foot down showing that you are the best in the division and you know the the, per- the only person in the division that can cause her problems is Raven Chapman and that's who she's standing across the ring from and it's a massive opportunity for both girls and we saw it last weekend Sandy Ryan against Mikhail Meyer that went is probably going to go down with a lot of us as fight of the year or one of the fights of the years this one for me has got fight of the year written all over it fight of the week and fight of the night and they're both going to go in it fully confident your interview with Raven that's up on the channel she looks really really confident in it and when both fighters are confident it's it, it's just got the ingredients for another cracker of a fight yeah so it's been a big end to the year especially for female boxing obviously like I said with that fight lot was it last weekend or the weekend before and was really good probably the female fight of the year so far this historic fight you've got katie taylor amanda serrano coming up as well so you've got some really big fights coming up towards the end of the year for women's boxing it's it's great to see this honest card because it's a chance for both these women to show that these female fights belong on a card like this like a lot of people look down on it but some of the best fights you'll ever watch are the female fights like some of the fights we've watched this year have just been amazing and these are two fighters at the top level and I think Chapman is Nicholson's tough, toughest test and it's, it's just got all the added ingredients as well of the Queensbury matchroom sort of angle The yeah, it, it was a fight I said I wanted on the 5v5 back in June it's one of the ones I, before they were announced what fights were on there we sort of put our list together the ones we wanted to see and this fight was on my list of the five and I'm really looking forward to getting to finally see it and see who the top dog is of the division. Yeah, I mean, would it be nice? And I mean, this this uh, this sounds weird because Sky's obviously come out and said a fair amount of times. She doesn't want, she does, if she doesn't have to get hit, she's not going to get hit. She and people have hitting, criticised yeah. her for that. But it would be quite nice to see Sky have to prove and prove to people that she's got that in her because I do think she's, she gets painted with this brush of uh, a kind of soft fighter that just outboxes everyone. And she does just outbox everyone. But I don't. I, I imagine there has to be a fighter in there somewhere that, that if Raven Chapman sticks it on her and she does have to dig deep, I, I think she will have that fight in her to do so. But we just haven't seen it yet because we haven't had to. There's no feeling out process in this fight. I no. think they're just going to bite down on each other's gum shield and just go for it. Bite because, on each other's? <laughs> on, bite down on their own gum shield. Sorry. It's been a long day. And... Um, Listen, we're going to make our prediction soon. It's a, this is a, it's tough, a tough call. one to it's call. A tough call. <laughs> it's like a lot of the fights on the card are. But there's okay. a there's a fighter on the card that I want to talk about. Saudi Arabian boxer making his professional debut, Mohammed Alakal. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. He, he will make his debut. Another Saudi Arabian boxer making his debut, and it's great to see he's fighting a Colombian, Jesus Gonzalez. Coming, his last fight was against um, Ibrahim Suleiman and he lost by a second round TKO but it's just great to see another Saudi Arabian boxer now coming through and you know we could be he could be the first ever world champion I think Ziad Al Mayouf I think he was his last fight was a draw Um, but yeah it's great to see that now there's Saudi Arabian boxers coming through and obviously going on a big stage like this and uh, to show what they're about but yeah I think it won't be too long I think in our lifetime, we will see a Saudi Arabian heavyweight, or oh, not heavyweight, a champion, a world champion. And it's great to see another one making a his professional debut. He's trained by um, Joe Gallagher. And you see what Joe Gallagher's done with some of the fighters over the years. He's a very well-respected boxing coach in the boxing world. And yeah, Mohammed could be something special for the future. Yeah, I think that's something that gives me confidence that... Saudi Arabia is going to stick around yeah. in boxing is the fact that they're trying to build their own stars could come a point where they've got they don't set a fight doesn't they go right we don't need to anymore now we've just got we'll put our own cards together but yeah it's good to see that they're obviously promoting the sport in their own country as well and trying to build up some of their own talent so yes yeah, great overall for boxing what's mental when you look at this whole card Obviously, that that fight is going to be the the first one on. What comes on next? Is it going to be Sky Nicholson Raven Chapman? Are we going to have a, a female you know world title fight open up the card? Are we going to have Ben Whitaker, a superstar, open up the card? Is it Chris Eubank Jr. I think in a Whit- world title fight? You know I think what Whitaker starts, didn't he? That's. But I'm not sure if they've already put it out. 
you know, Ben. Oh, yeah, I think they've put it out this morning. I'm sure they haven't. I haven't had a look at it, but that is mental, isn't yeah. it? The, the, when you when you look at these, like when we spoke about um, Wembley, and obviously he lost that fight in the end. But when you, it's like, what's Mark Chamberlain doing fighting at like <laughs> four p.m. or three p.m. whenever in front it was? Of hardly anyone. Yeah. It was like this is this is mental. You know, th- th- he probably feels like he's gone back ten years. Mm. Um, so when Padley was probably thinking, "What this is this big crowd?" This, uh, according to the DAZN tweet, Sky Nicholson's. The second fight on, then oh, it's it Ben be. Whitaker, then Jai Opataya, then the heavyweight clash, Wardley Clark, Chris Eubank Jr. is the co main event. I don't know how he's wangled that. Uh, how has he managed that? I like, don't, I that, don't that, think... should, that should be kicking off the fight night, if, in my opinion. But I think he's there because it's a name. And then obviously the big one, the the crown showdown is their name in it. Have you boys seen the trailer for it? Yes. I, I'm waiting it's now really for the good. movie. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> They're going to start making next. two hour long movies for these fight cards because these trailers are getting better and better and better as we go. Seeing uh, yeah, the Latina Night one will be interesting to see. The yeah. Latina Night, um, they'll do, I'm sure they'll do something cool with that. Non pay per view as well. And then right? after that, you've obviously got Usyk. They've already started Fury two, which they're is filming. Be, they've already that. started filming. Outside of Weatherspoons as well. Wow. That Tyson Fury's walking down, punching someone. It's going to be interesting. We do see a lot of in Cardiff as well. We've all got off. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, we've all got our phones out. So I suppose let's jump over to the predictions. The best time of the week. Thing is, right? I like these when there's actually when it's a big card and a big fight like this. It has that extra kind of bite. Like, let's be real. I I won the last one. I wasn't that asked by it. I was like, <laughs> oh, nice. I won. You want to win these ones? When I got the Usyk Fury fight right, I was buzzing. I was excited. Um, what about you? Were you excited about that one, Harry? Next question. Um, let's come back. Uh, <laughs> uh, Whoa! It's Chris Eubank Jr. How many times is he going to say that this week? Oh, can you imagine I the post well. fight? Post fight interview. He's been so, so, yeah. Chris, what did you make out of your performance out there? Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, like just calls them all. I don't think it's going to happen. But it would be quite funny. I think, he's been, I think Terry Gallagher Shake sat him down and said, Probably. This ain't about you, mate. Chill out. Do you notice how I was careful? I didn't actually say, <laughs> call any of them a scumbag, just so I couldn't clip it up and I know what you're like get me in trouble <laughs> it's normally you clicking it up normally. the stuff yeah um, <laughs> the first fight Ben Whittaker Liam Cameron light heavyweight 10 rounder um, Ben Whittaker's probably you know going to be looking keeping one eye open on that main event obviously after his fight as well I think he's going to win it <sighs> points decision is probably the most likely but I'm going to go for a knockout I think he's been a bit uh, relaxed in his last few fights and I think in this one, when there's a bit more coming back at him, there might be a bit more bite. And I do think he's got the power to get people out of there. Liam Cameron, in his last fight, asked a lot of questions of Lyndon Arthur. Lyndon Arthur was coming off, what, going the distance against Dimitri Bivol. I believe that it's, he's going to ask a lot of questions. So there's a bit like Jack Massey, Liam Cameron, in this fight, both from Yorkshire, Sheffield, Liam Cameron. I think Ben Whitaker gets a points decision win. Yeah, I'd, like I said, I think Whittaker's got the ability to stop people, right? I think he probably goes searching for it. Like, I think he's happy to get the points decision win. And I think, like I said, Cameron's going to be tough. He's not going to be mm-hmm. easy to get out there. So I think Whittaker will take... I think it'll be comfortable enough for him, but I think he'll take a decision win. And the other thing now is Boxer have got the light heavyweight division stacked. They've got Joshua Boatzi coming off that win against Willie Hutchinson. I believe they've signed Anthony Yard, because he's fighting October 19th on the undercard of Adam Azim O'Hara Davis, but yeah, I think Ben Whitaker gets through this. He could be potentially knocking on the door of Anthony Yard and saying, listen, start of 2025, me and you in Wolverhampton or something, that would be incredible. Yeah. Sky Nicholson, Raven Chapman, featherweight. This has it as a 12 rounder, 12 twos. I imagine, I would have thought it was going to be 10 twos. Yeah, I don't know if the boxing news actually made an error there. Um, I imagine so. We'll say it's going to be 10 twos. Um, We've probably, this is the one that we're probably going to go the same on, I'd imagine. Yeah. Sky Nicholson points decision? Yes. Have you changed it? Just, just about. Just I've about. Well, he said before we started filming, actually, Ben's predictions changed only because he said round one knockout for someone. Yeah. This fight, he said, was a draw before we hit yeah, record, he didn't did, he? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't think I did. No, yeah. no. He said that uh, Bivol's going to quit on his stool after yeah. the first round. Chris yeah. Eubank Jr. is not even going to fight. Like, yeah. Look at this guy, honestly. Now he's playing it safe. Yeah. Um, speaking of Chris Eubank Jr., <laughs> fighting uh, Camel Cesarometa. Middleweight, twelve round. Well done. Good. That was. I was not yeah. confident about that one, and I've probably butchered it. Um, I'm going to go for a Eubank KO. 
I think he should get a KO. Whether he will or not is a different thing, but I think he should be knocking this guy out. He's got 12 rounds to work. Yeah, Chris Eubank Jr., knockout, late. I think he stops him quite quick. No? Yeah. And then, surely then, you could be get on the mic and just call out Canelo Alvarez. Be good. Just for that he's like... He's only lost to Golovkin and Mungia, but Too good this, names, is, yeah. this is the he needs to make a statement here in terms of pushing on now, and I think he's just going to go in there and try and steamroll him up to there. For me, it says a lot when his opponent doesn't turn up for the press conference, the launch press conference. Everyone else was at the launch press conference, bar him. Mm, for me, yeah. that read I, if I'm reading too much into it, yeah, I think yeah, and Chris Eubank walks over. The thing I did notice as well is uh, Sormeta, the two losses he has got both times was when he was stopped in the co- or he stopped himself in the corner really mm, so I feel, I feel like if Eubank really sticks it on him he's not going to want to keep coming out to get bashed around every round because he said so. the other week that Terry Harper would stop, get stopped in the you maybe did. I could let go for you yeah exactly <laughs> send that to your friends uh, no I think uh, yeah Chris he could quit in the corner yeah, yeah I'll see good Jaya Pattaya Jack Massey cruiserweight 12 rounder Ben what's your picture uh, I've gone up Pattaya by decision Opatia stops him late. I think Jack Massey starts the fight strongly, but I think he gets tired and then Opatia finishes him uh tenth round. See, I'm about looking at eighty one point nine two percent predicted Opatia by KO. That seems high. It seems I a think, bit bad um, on Massey's side. I think people look know. look at his knockouts against Zoro and Thompson on there and expect that every time whereas yeah. I'm going for a Opatia points decision. I don't like it. Fabio Wardley, to me. Fraser Clark, heavyweight 12 rounder, round 13, as, as it's this been might. being called. British title fight. I called a Fraser Clark win what, the first time we predicted this. Yeah, and I actually think he probably deserved the win more out of the two of them. I think I had it one round to, Ward- to uh, Clark over Wardley. I think a draw was fair in that fight. But a draw, look I at it now. purposely, perfectly you know, happy with that. I'm going to go again for a Fraser Clark knockout Fraser Clark knock. complete opposite Fabio Wardley knocks him out um, like he did in the last fight knocked him down he survived that round and you saw at the end of the fight Fraser Clark looked absolutely knackered compared to Fabio Wardley so yeah Fabio Wardley for me in some people's eyes the more experienced but actually Fraser Clark from the amateur scene Fabio Wardley white collar background I believe Fabio Wardley gets the job done within Eight. You You've gone split. I've Can I just point something out now? Make your prediction, then I'll say it. I've gone with. I think it's really close. I went with Clark last time. Yeah, I was about to say that. But this time I've gone Wardley by stoppage. Imagine if it's another draw. It could be. <laughs> like could it's, be. it's very close, Imagine. right? But I, th- like you said last time, he, he got to him with points. I think I actually had Clark win in the last fight by a yeah. round, even though he got dropped and had the point deducted. But was that point deduction fair? Yeah, he yeah he yeah. threw a purposeful low blow. It was definitely. I think but he then said a lot of the backhands as well that Fabi Wardley was doing didn't get acknowledged by the referee or anything. Yeah, I think there's a lot of smart tactics in play there. It's a good fight. Um, I've just got a feeling Wardley will get. Is to this him. another fight of the year? By you? No, no. I don't feel. I don't know if it could live up to the first one because the first one was so good but it's got it's got the potential to be I don't like, see how it gets any better than that no. first one I think you, you're and it's hopeful and the other question does Fabio Wardley's nose open up early yeah I don't yeah. think it I, like you said though I don't think it necessarily matters if I think it really does because it's not in his way is no, it um, it just goes straight down his unless face, it yeah. gets to the point where it's so bad that it needs to be stopped but like it nearly did in the first fight because the doctor came in and yeah, had a look at it which again, I thought was a bit weird because it no interference with the eyes or anything. Yeah, yeah, I think it was fine. And then the last one, the main event, the big one, Artur Beterbiev versus Dimitri Bivol, light heavyweight, <laughs> twelve round. Who wants I think to go we've first? all. Who's feeling confident? Me. You're feeling confident. I think Bivol wins on points and creates history and becomes the first ever and the the first ever. Not the first ever. Becomes the first ever light heavyweight undisputed champion since 1999. First in both of your lifetimes. Yeah. True. Not in mine, but we'll skip past that. He brought that up then. That was in my notes. That was in my notes. No, Bivol, for me, I think he's going to approach this fight like he did against Canelo Alvarez and just 
outbox him. I don't think if he gets in close, then it plays into the hands of better BF. But like I said, it's a puncher against a boxer, and I think Bivol gets the job done. But Better BF could knock him out early. But I've gone <laughs> Bivol. Should, should we give on both predictions? Yeah. Though? No. Like I, Sam I, said at the start, I'm going to put a five on uh, Better BF knockout early, and then my actual prediction is Bivol points. I've gone Bivol points as well because I feel like the way Better Be Have fights plays into Bivol's hands with the way he likes to control the outside. So I think he'll just neck enough rounds over the course of the 12 to get a win on points. Well, this is really boring now because I've gone for the same. <laughs> <laughs> we played this up as this really dramatic 50 50 and then we've all gone the same way. But like we said in the last one, imagine that means this all one three of us are going to be wrong. Yeah. yeah. Let's be real. Better Be Have knocks him out in two minutes. Imagine that. Yeah, I wouldn't. It, it, this the thing is, it's doable. <coughs> like, I just think there's more question marks around Better Bev than there well, is Bivol with the injury. Yeah. In boxing, else. it's all about being active, and he hasn't really been active yet. As unfortunately, fought since January. Obviously, Bivol had that fight against uh, Libyan Libya's uh, Zerdo Marie, Ramirez, I think his name was. Yeah. And yeah, he looked really good. Got a stoppage win that we all thought was going to be another twelve rounder. And yeah, I just think Bivol. Joins Roy Jones Jr. as uh, another undisputed light heavyweight champion. Well, we'll have to wait till Saturday to see. In the meantime, uh, check out any of the content and the interviews you mentioned on this uh, this video. We've got, let me look at it, uh, Raven Chapman we interviewed, Ben Whitaker mm -hmm. we've interviewed. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff. There's various content around this that kind of trickled over as it's been announced and, and whatnot else. So check all of that out. So follow us on Twitter. I'm sure there'll be updates on the night. Instagram tiktok all that good stuff and we'll catch you all next week when we all have to sit here and say <laughs> that we didn't see the better be knockout come in or whatever happens thank you all for listening and we'll catch you all next week bosh punch's chance podcast